Welcome to another edition of Kickback 93. I'm your host, Lori McDermott. Hello, this is Kickback 93, the informative show about current trends of leisure activities for the 90s. Today, we'll take a look at three of the most popular trends and activities in today's world of leisure. Our first story takes a revealing look at the most popular fantasy world of comic books. From Superman to Batman, from Howard the Duck to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, comic books have for generations captured the imagination of amateur and professional visionaries alike. Let's take a look at this hobby. based at the trendy strip on Melrose Avenue in Hollywood, California, is the place where comic books enthusiasts of all ages can follow the adventures of their favorite characters. Here, one can find an assortment of rare and new comic books, science fiction books, television and film magazines, posters, t-shirts, character models, and other such novelties. We ask the store's owner and manager, Bill Leibowitz, about what are the most popular kind of comic books for readers today? Well, superhero comics are the most popular. That's the, um, the thing that you think of when you think of the genre. Uh, the X-Men, most of the Marvel books, the Hulk, the uh, Amazing Spider-Man and things like that, that those, those form the, the core. And the other subgenre is this sort of uh, eclectic horror, which is, I guess the best example is The Sandman, which is put out by DC. And uh, that appeals, that has a very large female readership also because it has sort of a romantic kind of a, a bent to it. Recently, Leibowitz premiered his new creation of a superheroine to promote the store and also to give its readers a new kind of hero in today's complex society. And uh, I'm pretty proud to have her represent her, to represent us, uh, Susie Ola. You know, I always wanted to have um, somebody to appear at trade shows and conventions and things like that to, to give out flyers and to explain about the, the store, either at comic conventions or, or more like at other collectible conventions and auto shows and things like that to broaden the appeal. And I said, you want to do that? You know, you can be our spokesperson and have any answers. So we had a contest to name the, our logo girl. And uh, we pulled people in the store and... Um, as part of another contest that we were having, and, and we chose the name Flaxen. And, and the judges were Steve Rude and Mark Evanier and Susie and myself, and Steve is an artist and, and Mark is a writer, so we, we went through and got this name, and then it was at dinner, and we said, terrific, we got this name, now what do we do? You know, do we just have her go, go out and do personal appearances? And Mark said, well, we could have some fun and, and do a comic book. And so we set about to do that, and Mark wrote it, and Steve did the cover. He's a very well-known artist, and we thought that would really help to, to sell the book. And um, Mark had, had tried some, um, some ideas as to what the character would be like, some storylines and things. And, and after a while, it became evident that Susie's real life story was better than anything that we had come up with. The idea of this transformation she had gone through and how she had empowered herself and become a more confident human being when she did this physical transformation. She was a very unhappy single mother who was overweight and, and not really happy with her appearance. And she went on a, uh, an exercise training regimen that changed her into a, a Playboy centerfold. And we use that metaphorically in the comic book. 
to just show people that everybody has superpowers inside them and, and that with enough self-confidence and, and good feelings about yourself, all the good stuff inside you can come out. And that's really the lesson that Flaxen teaches other people. We asked Bill why there is such a tremendous appeal of comic books today compared to what it was 50 years ago, especially in an industry of television and film action heroes. Uh, you've got to remember that, that most comics, uh, comics have been around as an art form for about 50, 55 years. And so they've changed a lot over that period of time. In the beginning, they were drawn by teenagers for teenagers. Now, uh, there are real serious writers who are doing comic books, people like Andrew Vax, uh, Frank Miller, um, a lot of Neil Gaiman, these people are, are very, you know, well versed in narrative form and, and they, they have multi-layered uh, narratives, things like The Watchmen, you can read it on two or three different levels. Frank Miller's been tapped to do uh, movies and, and things like that. Um, and so the, the, the form has changed and the storytelling techniques have changed and the characterizations have changed. You know, where Superman started off as a guy who could uh, a leap tall buildings and run faster than a, a locomotive. In the 90s, he got to be so powerful that it wasn't any fun anymore. He could you know, go back in time and travel through space and see through buildings and do all sorts of things. And so they had to really reinvent him and, and tone down his powers. And when that didn't work, they just killed him. And then they started all over again with different kind of supermen. And we don't know what that's going to evolve into. My name is Lori McDermott, and this is Kickback 93. Thanks for coming. See you next time.